I just want to give you a quick update uh, for this week, what we've been working on. Uh, I have four things that I talk about. First thing, I'm really excited to announce the launch of Glossica Viva. Now, Glossica Viva is a new platform where you, as a native speaker of your own language, can come on to the platform and contribute to the material that exists in Glossica's language training materials. So help the world learn your language. That's our tagline. And this is just a, a kind of like what the inside looks like. When you come in here, for example, if you're gonna be translating or recording or also verifying the translations and recordings that other people do inside the platform. Now, all of this, we have a, um, a fancy map that you can choose here, but your contribution gets paid for six months. Okay, so whatever you do in here, now this is a kind of a different uh, strategy than if you're a teacher who has to, and you're doing tutoring online, and you spend an hour tutoring somebody, you only make uh, your contribution once because it's based on the time. And in, in this case, we're doing a revenue sharing model, a business model. So that means that the translations that you do, uh, the verifying that you do, and the recording you do, uh, all go into a revenue sharing model. So that means that if your recordings and translations are favorites of the users and your material gets seen the most, obviously you will make more. Now, of course, uh, you have some questions. Uh, we have an FAQ available. You can click through um, through our blog article and also we have a backend FAQ available. So let's take a look at the map here. The map, uh, we actually provide all languages in the world. So they're scattered out here on the map and they're in clusters. So it's kind of separated right now. But if I zoom in on say like India, for example, you can see all the languages there in India. Now you'll see different colors that show up on the map and that just means it's vitality ranking for that language. So for example, if I go down here to Tamil, there's one that's called Old Tamil, that's an extinct language. Now there may not be anybody who speaks that language anymore, but uh, you know we've gotten uh, requests from users saying, hey, I'm, I, I, I'm an expert on Latin, I know Latin very well, and it would be really great to see Latin on the platform. Okay, so if you, uh, you can go to the search bar, you can search for your language. I can type in Latin, okay? And then a, a, a number of languages will show up on the side. Now, um, Latin's written right there. And then some other languages that might have like some fuzzy matches. Now you might see some other languages in here like Danish and you wonder why does Danish show up there? But um, what this search bar does is it allows you to search in any language. So maybe in some other language, the, the, the string of letters L-A-T-I-N match with Latin. So I can switch this to like say um, Chinese. Oh wait, that's uh, Russian. I can type in Latin in Chinese and it'll come up with Latin there. It'll also show it on the map. Now on the map, it's a little bit clustered here. So there's also a monastic sign language and Italian all located in the city of Rome. But you can play, play around with the map because it's, um, it's kind of interesting where you can see the, the, you know, where all the languages of the world are, are um, spoken. So uh, if you click through to the language here, for example, if I click on Latin, uh, it'll take you to a landing page. You can read the information we have on the landing page and actually apply now. Now, you may not be a native speaker of Latin, but we also have an academic um, option that you can choose. But so signing up is very easy. We want to know, uh, did you grow up learning this? Uh, did you grow up speaking this language? Who did you speak it with? Um, so you just need to answer a few questions in the questionnaire. Tell us your experience and background with the language. And then you'll also be, giving a, be given a little test to take to test your ability for translation, recording, and whatnot. And so we're interested really in, in providing lots of different recordings from anywhere in the world. You may not be, um, uh, you might be a heritage speaker of the language. You might have grown up in New York City, but you speak um, a dialect of a language from somewhere else in the world, like maybe Armenian or Chinese. Um, we would also be interested in getting your recordings because some users might want to hear what your uh, accent sounds like. So. You know, I think it's important that you're truthful about you know where your accent comes from, um, but that's actually quite useful to some people. They want to hear um, what your voice sounds like. So we welcome all kinds of um, ages, gender, uh, accents, and dialects. And so the second thing that I want to talk about is what we've been working on 
at the office this week, primarily, we have a Python team uh, that does NLP or natural language processing, and we have a linguists team, and both of them right now are working on doing a lot of tokenization work, token work, um, putting stuff, uh, getting stuff ready for machine learning. Um, another thing that we've been working on is a language placement test, a new placement test. So when you come into Glossica and you take the placement test, what happens is, um, for example, if I come in to uh, take a placement for, test for Japanese, in the old style, you would have to take like 10, you have to answer 10 questions before you can go on to the next level. We've refined that so it, basically we can figure out your level in probably less than 10 questions. Uh, if you get them wrong quickly, you, you'll finish the test. If you get them all right quickly, you'll finish the test quickly too. But if you get some right and some wrong, we need to keep testing you until we figure out what's your general level. And one good thing to keep in mind about the placement test is that if your if you're, um, listening is a lot better than your speaking, we recommend kind of to start at, a, at one level lower than where you think you are, just because you might think you're a B2 in your listening, you understand a lot. But what you're coming on to Glossica to do is to practice your speaking. Okay, it's not just listening. So we want to train your, your speaking ability. So be sure to start from like B1, get all that B1 content done before you go on to B2. I guarantee we've been receiving responses from users and they say, wow, there's a lot of great content in A1. I wish I had, hadn't had started in A2 to begin with. Um, it's just because some people are wondering why we put so much hard stuff in A1. It's not really hard stuff because if you look at it, uh, if you split up vocabulary over all these levels, there is quite a lot of um, vocabulary and sentence structures that go into A1 and A2. So um, it, it's really good to get uh, plenty of practice in those areas. Anyway, placement test is a, is a new update that we're releasing. And second thing I wanna tell you about here, the last thing that I wanna tell you about here is that if I go into uh, my Japanese uh, training right here, what you'll notice is that we've taken all the kanji out of here. So that the, the kanji actually matches the level you're at. And right now, let's see, my Japanese is at, probably okay, my Japanese is an A1 low. I'm still working through it. So I, you know, I don't see any kanji here, but if I change my level to like B1, I'll start to see a lot of kanji. But I can go down here, and you can do this on any language, you can, you can set up your transcriptions. So with your transcriptions, here we have characters, uh, furigana, phonics, and pronunciation. So maybe you don't wanna see the IPA, you can turn that off. Uh, I do wanna see the characters, um, or maybe I don't want to see the characters, but I do want to see the furigana. Furigana just means the pronunciation above the characters written in Ruby script. So now I can close that and then I can do my training and I can also see what the characters are. But the, uh, the, the default, the default uh, one right here is actually tagged to the specific level you're at. We use the Japanese um, Joyo Kanji, uh, government standard kanji based on the level you're at. So as you move through the course, you're gonna see more and more kanji. So even at the level one, I'm not gonna see watashi kanji here. That's just because of how the, uh, the government has set up the ranking levels for each kanji. All right, so that's all of our updates for today. Um, I'm going to add more stuff. We're actually working on male-female stuff to put into transcription so you can see the male and female for every language. We're working on that really hard to push out. So we'll let you know in the next update. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button.